Our oceans sustain life. An abundant ocean can feed a billion people a healthy meal every day forever. But now they are being filled, killed by throwaway plastics. The equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped in the sea every minute. 17.6 billion pounds every year. Plastic is everywhere in our ocean, floating on the surface, mixing in the salt water, and sitting on the ocean bottom, miles and miles deep. And once in the ocean, it never goes away. Over hundreds of years, it breaks down into small pieces. But those pieces, even the tiny ones called microplastics, are still plastic. Sea turtles are choking on it. Scientists say that over 60% of whale and dolphin species are affected by it. Zooplankton, the base of the ocean food chain, eat it. And so do we. It's in the water we drink. It's in our food. Microplastics have been found in our salt, our honey, and our beer. And sometimes, even in the air we breathe. Companies are choosing to make something that will be used just once from a material that lasts forever. If you don't like what throwaway plastics are already doing to our world, brace yourself. We face a tsunami of throwaway plastic in our and the ocean's future. Four times more plastic will be produced between now and the middle of the century than has been produced in all of history. Four times more. Plastic waste appears to be the major reason for the deaths of numerous aquatic animals. Fish is a staple food source of the Filipino people. They surround the country and have always been a part of the lifestyle of many Filipinos. However, fish are greatly affected by our actions every day. We are Viridi. The threat of plastic. Under the 14 Sustainable Development Low Life Underwater, our advocacy aims to show how plastic plays a detrimental role in the lives of fish. The Philippines' maritime waters produce unique and diverse marine life. The nickname Pearl of the East was given due to the country's natural beauty. Plastic is a material that is easy to mold and has made life convenient for people. It is mass-produced and used for packaging various products. However, this convenience is also damaging the environment. The number of marine animals that die because of plastic ingestion is alarming. The Philippines produces 2.7 million tons of plastic and 20% of this ends up in the ocean. There have been cases in the country where marine life was found dead due to plastic ingestion. As seen here from the post of Dibon Collector Museum, one of the most alarming finds was a juvenile whale consuming 40 kilograms of plastic. The Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives mentioned that the average Filipino uses 591 pieces of sachets, 174 shopping bags, and 163 plastic lapo bags yearly. Single-use plastic has become a problematic issue in waste management. Unless we take action, we'll keep on repeating the same mistake of harming marine life. Even a close alternative paper was found to be harmful to the environment as well. This is mostly due to its production and preparation, in which it has a higher global warming potential against plastic by 2.48 times. By 2050, the World Wildlife Fund expects that there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. How you can help and make a difference. Plastic remains an essential material in the everyday lives of people but we can reduce its waste mismanagement by using an alternative. Start using environmentally friendly bags. Eco bags, cloth bags, or other clothes alternatives that are reusable help to reduce plastic waste. Aside from switching bags, there are various products making the switch to be refillable. Reuse your containers instead of buying new ones. As Filipinos, we can all make a difference. We should all be willing to change for the betterment of not just the fish, but our environment as a whole. Ecobag is not a drag, the fill to reduce landfill. 
the solution for pollution, say no to plastic contribution. So sometimes on the weekends we'd be on the beach laying with our friends and hanging out and there would be a massive pile of trash right next to you. And a lot of the times what we saw in these piles of trash were single-use plastic items, whether it was the bag, the straw, the bottle, and whether we were swimming in the ocean, sometimes we'd feel these plastic bags wrapping around our legs and it really showed, you know, in a sense that plastic was strangling us all the time. We constantly ask, you know, what's someone going to do about this? And I think you sometimes forget that you can be that someone.
So six years ago when we began our campaign, plastic bags were used widely in Bali. I remember the first few times we were like, okay, we don't want a plastic bag. So they'd look at us confused and they'd double bag it even. But we've come such a long way in six years. Recently, we have seen definitely a change in mindset when you go to a store or a restaurant and they don't serve a plastic straw or you don't receive a plastic bag and you ask them why, they respond with, it's the law now, you can't use a plastic bag. And unfortunately, since it's only been really recently that it's been implemented, we still do see a few single-use plastic bags being used. And so that really shows that because the, just because these regulations and policies are now there, it doesn't mean the work is finished. It means that we have to go harder to ensure that these policies and, regular, and regulations are implemented and enforced properly and thoroughly. We've always had the message of saying no to plastic bags, but it's also sort of become a movement that kids can do things. My sister and I started when we were 10 and 12 years old and our entire team, locally and globally, are all middle school students, high school students, or university students. And so we really embody the message that kids can do things. And so naturally, our next project that we're hoping to launch in the next two months is called Youthtopia, where we believe empowered young people can accelerate change. And so we hope to create spaces, platforms, and a sort of headquarters for young people to come together to create solutions and to become real world change makers. a 600-foot tanker collided with a 200-foot fuel barge, tearing the barge in half. Several hundred thousand gallons of oil leaked out of the barge and into the fast-flowing Mississippi River, heading quickly towards the ocean. The oil spread down the river in minutes, immediately threatening drinking water intakes and wildlife. Responders sprang into action within hours of the accident. Using computer models and weather forecasts, they determined the path of the oil spill. With helicopter surveys, they assessed the damage and dispatched cleanup crews. Specialized boats with oil collection devices on their bows were sent to the scene. These devices, called skimmers, act like vacuums across the surface of the water. Hundreds of trained workers clean riverbanks and marshes using an unexpected tool, pom-poms. Noxious fumes from oil harms animals that can't avoid it, and others can be covered in it, leading to suffocation and death. Birds that get enough oil on their feathers eventually lose their ability to fly, and oiled sea otters can suffer from hypothermia. When oil spills occur, it can shut down beaches and fishing grounds. It can also lead to public evacuations. Environmental disasters can be prevented if cleanup efforts begin immediately. While large oil spills like the one in New Orleans last summer contribute to oil pollution, the ocean suffers from far more than the occasional spill that hits national headlines. In fact, hundreds of millions of gallons of oil end up in the ocean every year, and only 5% of that is from big spills. Most people don't realize that oil residue on roadways and oil dumped into storm drains are the number one source of oil pollution in the ocean. For the sake of humans and animals, let's keep oil out of our ocean. The exact problem of plastic in ocean is this. Now you come to the plastic graveyard here in the ocean. The washed up remains of a throwaway society. Now you see the enormity of the problem. This isn't litter that's been dropped on the beach. It's come in from the sea, recklessly thrown away, distributed on the currents, and then swept ashore. This is the most dangerous, the blue one. It's a single-use plastic. And this, if it gets down, you had it. This is all in the mall. This is from the mall. From People, the shopping mall. Shopping mall. This is so prevalent in Indian shopping mall. 
Afros inspired the world's biggest ever beach clean. Once a week, volunteers clear what they can, knowing full well that the next tide will lay a new carpet of plastic. So the ocean throws it up. Ocean pukes out every two months, three months, you know. And if you don't clean it, it will get piled on, piled on, piled on. It's just not convenient for the fishes and the marine creatures and marine birds, you know. It's their house. It's, it's there where they belong. They live, they survive. They're crying for justice because we have messed up with their houses. Worldwide, the equivalent of one rubbish truck of plastic waste is being dumped into the ocean every minute. By 2050, the trash in the sea is likely to weigh more than all of the fish. This is the debris of modern life, almost all of it single-use plastic. A bag used for a few minutes to take the shopping home, a straw used for seconds to drink some juice and thrown away with little regard for what happened to it and now being brought back in on the tide. Marine litter is a worldwide problem. This is the River Thames. Once the plastic reaches the North Sea, it'll begin to break down into tiny fragments over many decades, but it never completely disappears. The tiny pieces are called microplastic. It's eaten by sea creatures and ends up in our food. This portion of microsoft contains about 90 uh, particles of plastic. This scientist carried out the first comprehensive risk assessment shown exclusively to Sky News which suggests that the microplastic can be absorbed into our bloodstream. His research shows that by the end of the century, as many as 4,000 tiny fragments a year could build up in the body. I've asked many physicians, colleagues, professors, and, and so on, what does microplastic, what could microplastic do when it gets into our blood system? Uh, and the blunt answer was, we don't know. So we don't know, but in principle they could accumulate what I think they could do what was suggested by physicians is that perhaps they could accumulate around joints or, or, or certain types of tissue and cause inflammation there the plastic is already proving fatal for some marine creatures this bird has died slowly it's, it's, it's there's no fat remaining these are fulmers that have been found dead on the beach the post-mortem on the stomach isn't for the squeamish it, there's quite a bit of stuff in here. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll see. So you can see there's a lot of plastic in here. Goodness me. So it is this, uh, full of plastic. Yeah, so this gizzard is basically full of plastic. With so much plastic blocking its system, the bird wouldn't have felt hungry and probably starved to death. It's suffering from our mistakes. And uh, it, it's, it's a disgrace for mankind, I think, to, that you find this in animals. Cleaned and carefully laid out, this is the inventory of the bird's gizzard. 18 pieces of plastic weighing half a gram. Scaled up to a human, that's a lunchbox of trash. I would not like my son to have this in his stomach. Our waste, recklessly disposed of, is in the ocean food chain and it's coming back to haunt us. Thomas Moore, Sky News. During the threat of an oil spill, NOAA predicts where the oil might spread. To predict where oil might go, we model how weather, wind, tides, and currents affect oil movement. But natural variability in wind, weather, and water currents can change the trajectory of a spill in ways difficult to predict. To get the best forecast possible, we use aircraft and field observations to monitor the actual course and extent of an oil spill. These observations are then fed back into our computer model to improve the next forecast. Predicting the trajectory of an oil spill is tricky, but having better data and technology helps us show where oil is and where it could spread. Knowing where the oil is and where it is going is a key component of oil spill response. The sound of bubbles as they leave my regulator and watch them float gently to the surface, a stream of translucent pearls. As I slowly descended deeper, 
I was leaving the world I knew and discovering one that was patiently waiting for me. On the bottom of the ocean, corals dot the sand like comets in a galaxy. Fish flash by like glimmering stars and algae drift slowly through the water like a swirling Milky Way. I wrote that reflection in 2016 while I was learning how to scuba dive. I used to think of the ocean as fundamentally separate from the dry earth that we live on. I saw coastlines as a clear division between land and water. The ocean was its own ecosystem, its own environment, basically its own planet. But the ocean is our planet. It covers over 70% of the earth's surface and supports more than half of all living species. When we pollute our oceans, we pollute ourselves. Ocean plastics also affect coastal communities just as they do marine wildlife, so it's important to tackle this issue at every level possible. Both hurt starts and ends in our beautiful ecosystem. That's why people come here. And so, again, it's uh, counterproductive to trash the waterways that, that people are wanting to come here and enjoy. Um, but it, it does have an effect on uh, animal life. Certainly, we've seen the whales stranded with, with just this large amount of, of plastics in their bellies. Um, and so, there, there is a second order effect of uh, affecting the the animals in our beautiful coastal ecosystem. Whales are the largest mammals in the world. We love them so much that we embark on whale watching tours with the hope of catching one come up to the surface. Like birds, they migrate north to south with relative consistency. And yet, even these giants are not spared from the issues of plastic. Entanglement, ingestion, bioaccumulation. All these impact the whale and can even cause death. In some cases, we get to see the effects of plastics when whales wash up onto our coast. tons of plastic waste enters our oceans every year, resulting in the death of over 1 million marine animals annually. Victims of this pollution include mammals, fish, sharks, birds, and turtles. These animals are a part of our oceans and a part of our world. They have families, social groups, different methods of communication. They form vast ecosystems, essential to environmental health and the balance of nature. It is certainly in humanity's best interest to combat plastic pollution, but for the thousands of animals living in and around the ocean, it's a matter of life or death. They float. And when you eat them because they look like food, they're not. If you look in the ocean, you'll see all sorts of animals are eating plastic because it tastes like food, but it doesn't digest like food. And yeah. so they get all clogged up. Whales eat zodiacs. Um, leatherback turtles fill themselves up on plastic um, bags. And it kills them. Sea turtles are beautiful creatures of the sea that swim effortlessly through the waters. 
We see them as main characters in cartoons, as stuffed animals on shelves, and as instrumental pieces in colorful paintings or puzzles to complete. However, plastic pollution in the oceans are putting these fascinating creatures at risk. The plastic pollution problem that our oceans are faced with affects these creatures in various ways. Popular images and videos of turtles with plastic straws stuck in their nose have swarmed the internet recently, inciting a movement for reusable metal straws or paper straws. Popular companies have even changed their packaging to include strawless options. These plastic bags that find their way into our oceans are also commonly mistaken for jellyfish. So turtles and other marine species consume them. These plastic bags cause blockages in their digestive systems, ultimately leading to their death. Microplastics are easily consumed by these species and offer unique troubles for sea turtle nestings and new hatchlings, as studies have shown that microplastics alter the temperature and sediment permeability of these nests, creating problems for the unborn hatchlings before they even have a chance at a safe, unpolluted life. In the future, there are many ways we can make a positive change to the health of our oceans and reduce our single-use plastic consumption. The first being reusable drink and food containers. Carrying a thermos or reusable plastic water bottle can save approximately 1,500 single-use bottles each year. Additionally, with the times we are in, disposable masks are quickly littering the beaches and oceans all around us. Investing in reusable cloth masks can help to mitigate the rapid mask buildup plaguing our oceans. The fast fashion industry also heavily contributes to the buildup of microplastic in our oceans. Popular brands throw out over 13 million tons of clothes each year, and the microplastics in fabrics get into the digestive systems of oceanic animals. Humans can potentially ingest these dangerous microplastics A way to remedy this issue is through buying secondhand or through sustainably made brands. Additionally, produce and many other foods are unnecessarily packaged in plastic. Or grocery stores provide plastic bags for you to buy your produce. Bringing reusable produce in grocery bags can save around 700 plastic bags per person per year. Though this may seem small, if many people can mobilize to make small changes in their daily lifestyle to slightly reduce their single-use plastics, we can all make a positive difference together. When I learned how to scuba dive four years ago, I felt like I was crossing into a new world. But in reality, I wasn't. I was just lucky enough to catch a glimpse of our planet that can't be seen from dry land, and that often isn't seen by human eyes. Observing life at the bottom of the ocean gave me a deeper understanding of the connections between all living things. I started to understand why the life of a coral reef is just as important and personal as the life of the grass in my own backyard. I care about protecting our oceans because I care about protecting our home, planet Earth. What you've done God wanna help us Anymore I won't cry out for sure 
I just back down sometimes. Why? Well, I say, hey, what you've done? God must be gone. Oh, so I won't forget, of course. What you. I cry for my tears and yours with the mouth goes on to you No need to go cry I don't know why no time God set right Why Well I say hey What you done Right, right now, I won't cry for sure. I just back down sometimes. Let a words cry, cry. Well, I just found a way out. So close your eyes, quiet your mind, and start to. No need to go cry. I don't know why. I don't know if time got set right. Why? Well, I say, hey, what you've done? I got a need of. Just back, live our life. Get free our minds. Get close your eyes. Back down sometimes. Just found a way out. So close your eyes, quiet your mind. Begin to, begin to. No need to go cry. No, I know I got no time. God said right. Why? Yeah. 
Sir, taga saan kayo, sir? Alpha Mark yun po, ayun. Boss, take a boss. That's Marina. So, can we go to the Alpha Mart? Boss, take a boss. That's my. The boss, take a boss. The boss. Alpha Mart. Alpha Mart. So, can we go to the Alpha Mart? Boss, mga taga saan sila, boss? Anong lugar po? Taga saan po sila? Uh, Imus. Halos lahat yata na pumupunta ng mga taga Alpamart, taga Imus, no? Hindi naman. Ay, iba-ibang ere. So, ang ginagawa niyo po ba, sir, is community service? Tama po ba? Yes. Yes, tama yun. So, yung guys, ah, uh, narinig niyo na guys yung mga pahayag nila, guys, no? So, napakaganda ng advocacy ng Alpamart dahil parang nga uh, daw, din ito sa mga sa community dito mismo ng uh, Baseco Beach. So guys, uh, babalikan ko kayo guys ha. Sige. Can you see the filth? If we don't remove, who's going to remove it? As a citizen, I think somebody has to take a link. If we start, I'm sure more residents of Vasova will come up. 
and along with BMC's help, we are trying to clear this in the maximum. BMC is heavily involved with the project. BMC and the local MLA is also aware. The ultimate goal is to change the mindset of the Koli people here in this village. There are 19 beaches in Bombay. I'm working on one beach. Our whole group is working on beach. I would want this model to be replicated throughout 18 beaches. In fact, I'm getting phone calls from different locality, and we are actually I'm, uh, uh, my group, whole group, VRVs are bracing up to make sure that uh, you know it is this model is replicated all over Mumbai. VRV is probably bigger. There's another one called Beacho Beach, and Beacho Beach is also like I was saying they go around to different beaches, uh, Varsova, Juhu. They go to schools and they're starting some new things with schools. Clean, decent environment is the only heritage which you're going to pass to the next generation. I hold it in trust for the next generation. And if you are not going to do it now, it will never happen. This is the time, this is now. I would request all Mumbaika that if they can uh, take, replicate this model all over 19 beaches. Our citizens have to be alert and they have to wake up. It's not only blaming BMC, it's our habits. We are dumping things here, we are not putting things in the right. If you want Swatch Abhyan, start it from right today. Secrets pouring out onto the surface, only under the exposure. Keep me under the blood. Lefkas is an amazing island on the west coast of Greece. We lived here on our boat in a part that was surrounded by wetlands and salt flats. So without a car, we walked and cycled everywhere. We also discovered the huge amount of wildlife that lived here, such as swans, flamingos, egrets, ducks, as well as turtles, butterflies and amphibians. We also found a lot of rubbish, including plastic, which was polluting this special environment. Some was just washed up along the coast and the rest seemed to be dumped. It looked like people would drive into the wetlands and offload their rubbish rather than take it to the dump. In the marina, some liverboards were organising their own recycling system. Cans and plastic bottles were being collected in the community room and then taken on their fold-up bikes to a recycling project every week. This project is called Lefko Gaia. Hi, my name is Thomas. I work in a recycle uh, cooperative company and uh, we have uh, the private place. We rent this place and we recycle. This place here you rent? Uh, yes, uh, okay. we rent this place. Okay, so this is the building that you rent? Yes. Yeah. And how much do you have to pay for this building now? Uh, we pay every month about 300, 300 euros. Yeah. And uh, we recycle it. What put in electric? Uh, televisions, uh, we have a small car, we can bring it if it's a problem. You can collect it? Yes, we have a telephone number and then... Right, show me what everything else you do. Let's uh, go have a look. We press... Uh, Only the only the pet one, not the hard bottle. Yeah. Like that. 
crush it. We have a box here. No, it's. Uh, this is different type of plastic. This is different from plastic. You don't get it. Yeah. And then we inside the uh, aluminium cans. cans. Aluminium cans. Cans is here, yes. Yeah. From Coca Cola, bridge or something like that. Metals. Yes, yes, this is a box that is full from the restaurants. For example, uh, batteries. Batteries. Batteries from the boats. Uh, batteries all, in the boat. all the kinds of batteries from the car. Okay. Like that. And bigger, yeah. of course. Yeah. Until 30, 40 kilos. It's very important. The dark plastic or the white plastic. Yeah. Uh, yes, we press. Uh, papers from the supermarkets or uh, these boxes. the people with supermarkets they bring with uh, their own car. People help us very, very many, many times, every yeah. time. Are you one of the helpers, Andrew? Yes, yeah, I'm really enjoying coming here, yeah. helping uh, come once a week, in a, one morning a week. We put the, the paper, which small papers, we put it in the machine, put it times, and press like that. For example, Make like that, then we fix this the metal here. We make like that 100, 100 kilos. 100 kilos, 90, 90 to 1 and 120. Yeah, and then 7 cents per kilo, about 7 euros. Wow, that's a lot of cardboard, and it's very little, isn't it? A lot of work, yes, yes, yes to yes. get a small amount of euros. Yes, yeah, and you can weigh it from that. All the, all the kinds of metal, yeah. Heating metals, you know, all the metals. What is the metal? Here is the plastic. Plastic? Yes. Yeah. This kind of plastic. They have plastic. Yeah. What's the government provided yeah, container? Yeah, yeah, it's a good day. It's a recycled company, not exactly yeah. the government. Uh, in the website, we have a telephone number. If someone is, is impossible to bring here one big refrigerator, he can call me. He call you? Again, and uh, I go, I visit him. You will collect it? You, okay, collect that's good to know. What is from metals? This is the, our van. Yes, so you can collect it in this van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very important. Some people, if they, they can help us even with money, because we need electric. We have electric now from the car service. We, we want to, 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 to put the, our own electric. It's about 400 euros, 500, you know. Okay, yeah. We have not this money at the moment, but in the future, until the springtime, we yeah. must to, to do it. Yeah. Because we need electric. We, we have only two lights. Only two lights to work, yes. in this recycling yes, building. But, but uh, survive. We, we, we try to survive. Yeah. So Lefko Gaia is a non-profit social enterprise whose aim is to collect and sell recyclable materials. The proceeds from which will go towards maintaining this project and especially funding educational programmes to profile the importance of environmental issues to children and adults in the local community. Lefko Gaia is run by a cooperative group of local people passionate about protecting and enhancing the environment of Lefkada. Bottles, we could recycle them. Recycle, they um, go in that one, okay. So we've sailed away from Lefkada in Greece now and hopefully left it better than when we found it, even a little bit. We've met people everywhere who want to make a change and we think that if everyone does a little bit, we will all see a difference. Why is this beach so important, Jane? Uh, it's the turtle beach, where the turtles come and um, lay their eggs. So one small patch is cleared of plastic. If everyone does a little bit, we will all see a difference. So you can organise a massive beach clean-up or pick up three bits of plastic to leave a place more beautiful than when you found it. Just putting our three bits of plastic, maybe more, in the bin off the beach.
Hola, soy Leonardo, mucho gusto, muchas gracias a todos. Hoy tuvimos una linda actividad, una limpieza de playa en Caulla, en el Parque Nacional Cabo Blanco, y fue espectacular. Mucha, mucha basura, tuvimos muchos voluntarios, mucha gente con ganas de trabajar. Estamos súper contentos, súper felices. Un lugar espectacular, muy, 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 muy bonito, y lo disfrutamos en grande. Mucha gente muy especial, muchos voluntarios, y súper felices. Muchas gracias a todos. Teresa Cerdas, trabajo en la Reserva Natural Absoluta Cabo Blanco. Ah, es, ha sido un día muy eh, valioso, valioso para Cabo Blanco porque ha significado, no sé, más de 500 kilos de residuos que han estado en las playas de la Reserva Natural Absoluta Cabo Blanco y gracias a muchos voluntarios ha sido posible quitar parte de eso, pero ocupamos más en tu The ocean, a beautiful, majestic part of nature that is home to over 2 million species, the largest waterfall, and the world's largest living structure. Not only is the ocean a natural beauty, but it is also essential to human life. It produces 70% of the oxygen we breathe, 97% of our water supply, and absorbs 30% of CO2 emissions. However, there is one major problem. Plastic waste is threatening to choke the oceans and destroy marine life. German researchers found much higher rates of plastic particles in Arctic sea ice than were previously known. Ocean pollution. According to World Atlas, ocean pollution is defined as the introduction of toxic materials such as plastic, chemicals, agricultural waste, and industrial waste into ocean waters. Various organizations are dedicated in solving ocean pollution through educational seminars, beach cleanups, and reducing single-use plastics. And all of these methods are a step in the right direction. To accelerate this cause, we wanted to create a piece of technology with the intention of solving the problem completely. Our idea is simple, a robot that collects trash. As it moves to the water, it collects floating debris. The robot also filters the harmful chemicals in the water using a 100 micron filter and a box to collect plastic trash. Currently, we have a prototype made out of VEX parts, but we're looking past this robot and build a larger one out of PVC pipes and Arduino. One group, one idea, and one robot determined to save our one and only planet. Eight million 
tons of plastic per year being dumped into our ocean. If we eat fish, we may be eating some plastic pieces as well. At the time, it's urgent in terms of concrete steps that government and citizens... The solution to the ocean plastic problem is on land. So you can spend all this time cleaning up the ocean. It's never going to end. What's going to make it end is how do we change how we do things? How do we deal with our waste in a different way? Dari Banyuwangi sudah 10 tahun ngangkut sampah di Bali. Tapi kalau ini nggak diambil tambah banyak lagi, tambah banyak lagi terus-terusan kayak gitu kan gitu. Benar kita dengan kondisi kayak gini udah jenuh kita gitu. Tapi kita terus berusaha berusaha untuk masyarakat biar lingkungannya bersih gitu aja. There are over a million independent waste workers across Indonesia. It's a really hard job and they're doing it with like such limited resources. Half the island has no waste collection. If your waste isn't collected, people start burning their garbage or throwing it in the canal river. So the whole digital revolution has kind of completely missed the waste sector. Today almost everyone has a smartphone, which means we can now address this problem in ways we couldn't imagine just five years ago. We started doing these trainings with high school students, building data sets of the actual things in the waste to be able to quickly assess if you're going to one of these waste facilities to see what's there, um, what the value is. We collected all the images and then we transferred it to the Google Cloud platform. From there, we can separate it in data sets and we train till we have the good model. We first heard about the Google AI Impact Challenge through social media. If we want to be a trash tech company, we're going to probably use AI. Discovering AutoML, looking at TensorFlow. The big benefit in working with Google.org has been this connection with mentors. The last month and a half, we've done more tech development than we've ever done before. With this app, the waste collectors will have a map of their customers, so we'll know where their customers are and when they need to collect. They'll be able to receive payments for their service from their customers, and then they'll also be able to track what they've collected and what in the waste is recycled to know what value they'll get out of it. We were helping the collectors work better, do better, be more productive. If you want to solve this problem, you got to support the people that are dealing with it every day, day in and day out. Waste is a man-made concept. There is no waste in nature. As we explain to people what's actually going on, this is how we can solve it, I think we'll get a lot of support. This is our chance to get the waste collected, sorted, recycled, and out of our rivers and oceans. Turtles come back to Indian Beach for the first time in 20 years after world's biggest cleanup prove we can make a difference. We're all very much aware of the suffering that we, as human beings, impose on the other species that inhabit our planet. Habitat destruction, overexploitation, climate change, and the introduction of invasive species have all contributed to what is rapidly becoming a sixth mass extinction. And this time, it's all down to us. But what if we could successfully undo some of this damage and help endangered species to recover? While this is a huge ask, the story of the sea turtles can give us some grounds for optimism. Sea turtles have roamed the oceans for over a hundred million years and have had it seriously tough since humans started encroaching on their habitats. When not being caught and eaten in their millions by people looking for an easy catch, their nesting sites have been ruined by development and pollution along beaches. And they've been accidentally caught and entangled in countless nets and hooks that fisheries use and leave behind. However, a recent study of 299 nesting sites in diverse locations around the world has shown a significant increase in sea turtle nests, indicating that numbers of these magnificent creatures may be making kids on a roster system and about 5,000 volunteers cleaning up regularly on weekends. We recently also led close to 6,000 people on the beach for cleanup on the 31st of May, 2018. 
Despite these positive initiatives, these sea turtles are far from out of the woods yet. Just this week, three. Oceans sustain life. An abundant ocean can feed a billion people a healthy meal every day forever. But now they are being filled, killed by throwaway plastics. The equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped in the sea every minute. 17.6 billion pounds every year. Plastic is everywhere in our ocean floating on the surface, mixing in the salt water, and sitting on the ocean bottom, miles and miles deep. And once in the ocean, it never goes away. Over hundreds of years, it breaks down into small pieces. But those pieces, even the tiny ones called microplastics, are still plastic. Sea turtles are choking on it. Scientists say, that over 60% of whale and dolphin species are affected by it. Zooplankton, the base of the ocean food chain, eat it. And so do we. It's in the water we drink. It's in our food. Microplastics have been found in our salt, our honey, and our beer. And sometimes even in the air we breathe. Companies are choosing to make something that will be used just once from a material that lasts forever. If you don't like what throwaway plastics are already doing to our world, brace yourself. We face a tsunami of throwaway plastic in our and the ocean's future. Four times more plastic will be produced between now and the middle of the century than has been produced in all of history. Four times more. Plastic waste appears to be the major reason for the deaths of numerous aquatic animals. Fish is a staple food source of the Filipino people. They surround the country and have always been a part of the lifestyle of many Filipinos. However, fish are greatly affected by our actions every day. We are Viridi. The threat of plastic. Under the 14 Sustainable Development Will Life Underwater, our advocacy aims to show how plastic plays a detrimental role in the lives of fish. The Philippines' maritime waters produce unique and diverse marine life. 
the nickname Pearl of the East was given due to the country's natural beauty. Plastic is a material that is easy to mold and has made life convenient for people. It is mass-produced and used for packaging various products. However, this convenience is also damaging the environment. The number of marine animals that die because of plastic ingestion is alarming. The Philippines produces 2.7 million tons of plastic and 20% of this ends up in the ocean. There have been cases in the country where marine life was found dead due to plastic ingestion. As seen here from the post of Dibon Collector Museum, one of the most alarming finds was a juvenile whale consuming 40 kilograms of plastic. The Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives mentioned that the average Filipino uses 591 pieces of sachets, 174 shopping bags, and 163 plastic labo bags yearly. Single-use plastic has become a problematic issue in waste management. Unless we take action, we'll keep on repeating the same mistake of harming marine life. Even the close alternative paper was found to be harmful to the environment as well. This is mostly due to its production and preparation, in which it has a higher global warming potential against plastic by 2.48 times. By 2050, the World Wildlife Fund expects that there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. How you can help and make a difference. Plastic remains an essential material in the everyday lives of people but we can reduce its waste mismanagement by using an alternative. Start using environmentally friendly bags. Eco bags, cloth bags, or other clothes alternatives that are reusable help to reduce plastic waste. Aside from switching bags, there are various products making the switch to being refillable. Reuse your containers instead of buying new ones. As Filipinos, we can all make a difference. We should all be willing to change for the betterment of not just the fish, but our environment as a whole. Ecobag is not a drag. The fill to reduce landfill. The solution for pollution. Say no to plastic contribution. But we can reduce its waste mismanagement by using an alternative. Start using environmentally friendly bags. Eco bags, cloth bags, or other clothes alternatives that are reusable help to reduce plastic waste. Aside from switching sustain life. An abundant ocean can feed a billion people a healthy meal every day forever. But now they are being filled.
killed by throwaway plastics. The equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped in the sea every minute. 17.6 billion pounds every year. Plastic is everywhere in our ocean, floating on the surface, mixing in the salt water, and sitting on the ocean bottom, miles and miles deep. And once in the ocean, it never goes away. Over hundreds of years, it breaks down into small pieces. But those pieces, even the tiny ones called microplastics, are still plastic. Sea turtles are choking on it. Scientists say that over 60% of whale and dolphin species are affected by it. Zooplankton, the base of the ocean food chain, eat it. And so do we. It's in the water we drink. It's in our food. Microplastics have been found in our salt, our honey, and our beer. And sometimes even in the air we breathe. Companies are choosing to make something that will be used just once from a material that lasts forever. If you don't like what throwaway plastics are already doing to our world, brace yourself. We face a tsunami of throwaway plastic in our and the ocean's future. Four times more plastic will be produced between now and the middle of the century than has been produced in all of history. Four times more. Plastic waste appears to be the major reason for the deaths of numerous aquatic animals. Fish is a staple food source of the Filipino people. They surround the country and have always been a part of the lifestyle of many Filipinos. However, fish are greatly affected by our actions every day. We are Viridi. The threat of plastic. Under the 14 Sustainable Development Low Life Underwater, our advocacy aims to show how plastic plays a detrimental role in the lives of fish. The Philippines' maritime waters produce unique and diverse marine life. The nickname Pearl of the East was given due to the country's natural beauty. Plastic is a material that is easy to mold and has made life convenient for people. It is mass-produced and used for packaging various products. However, this convenience is also damaging the environment. The number of marine animals that die because of plastic ingestion is alarming. The Philippines produces 2.7 million tons of plastic and 20% of this ends up in the ocean. There have been cases in the country where marine life was found dead due to plastic ingestion. As seen here from the post of Dibon Collector Museum, one of the most alarming finds was a juvenile whale consuming 40 kilograms of plastic. The Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives mentioned that the average Filipino uses 591 pieces of sachets, 174 shopping bags, and 163 plastic labo bags yearly. Single-use plastic has become a problematic issue in waste management. Unless we take action, we'll keep on repeating the same mistake of harming marine life. Even the close alternative paper was found to be harmful to the environment as well. This is mostly due to its production and preparation, in which it has a higher global warming potential against plastic by 2.48 times. By 2050, the World Wildlife Fund expects that there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. How you can help and make a difference. Plastic remains an essential material in the everyday lives of people but we can reduce its waste mismanagement by using an alternative. Start using environmentally friendly bags. Eco bags, cloth bags, or other clothes alternatives that are reusable help to reduce plastic waste. Aside from switching bags, there are various products making the switch to being refillable. Reuse your containers instead of buying new ones. As Filipinos, we can all make a difference. We should all be willing to change for the betterment of not just the fish, but our environment as a whole. Ecobag is not a drag. The fill to reduce landfill. The solution for pollution. Say no to plastic contribution.
exact problem of plastic in ocean is this. Now you come to the plastic graveyard here in the ocean. The washed up remains of a throwaway society. Now you see that I care about protecting our oceans because I care about protecting our home, planet Earth. We've met people everywhere who want to make a change and we think that if everyone does a little bit, we will all see a difference. Why is this beach so important, Jane? Uh, this is the turtle beach, where the turtles come and um, lay their eggs. So one small patch is cleared of plastic. If everyone does a little bit, we will all see a difference. So you can organise a massive beach clean up or pick up three bits of plastic to leave a place more beautiful than when you found it. Just putting our three bits of plastic, maybe more, in the bin off the beach. A cooperative group of local people passionate about protecting and enhancing the environment. Nah, kita dengan kondisi kayak gini udah jenuh kita. Tapi kita terus berusaha, berusaha untuk masyarakat biar lingkungannya bersih gitu aja. There are over a million independent waste workers across Indonesia. It's a really hard job, and they're doing it with like such limited resources. Half the island has no waste collection. If your waste isn't collected, people start burning their garbage or throwing it in the canal river. So the whole digital revolution has kind of completely missed the waste sector. Today almost everyone has a in and day out. Waste is a man-made concept. There is no waste in nature. As we explain to people what's actually going on, this is how we can solve it, I think we'll get a lot of support. This is our chance to get the waste collected, sorted, recycled, and out of our rivers and oceans. <laughs>